My mom used to say, you know, you have to be a nice Chinese girl, you have to be docile and sweet. Asian women are always fighting against that stigma that they're very meek. Growing up in a pretty traditional Chinese family, I didn't really see food as a career option at all. My food takes people through the Asian American experience. They're watching a brushstroke by brushstroke recreation of the food that they're about to eat, and they're hearing audio narration from me explaining all the aspects of the symbolism. I'm Jenny Dorsey. I'm a professional chef, writer, and artist specializing in using food to talk about bigger social topics. Growing up as a first generation immigrant here in the US, there was many times I felt my food culture was not accepted. I think it's really important for immigrant children, yes, but also just people in general to realize how powerful of an impact food has on their lives. I really um, fight against the fact that food is only meant to make us feel good or it's supposed to be delicious and kind of that's it. It's a very shallow way to interpret something that is so integral, not only to like our lives because we have to eat to live, but also how we understand our own communities, how we understand our upbringing. I was born in Shanghai, and my parents uh, actually left China about two years after I was born to come here. Going back to when I was six, I have a pretty distinct memory of being in like summer camp and uh, getting this like giant slice of ham. Especially in Chinese cuisine, um, things are served relatively small, bite-sized, easy to grab via chopsticks. I just remember stabbing the whole thing with um, with a fork. Didn't know, and I was kind of like trying to eat it, like from the side. And my teacher just grabs it out of my hand, and she's like, "We don't eat like this, you know. We have manners." And it was a very distinct and kind of early uh, memory of feeling very othered. I really wanted to tackle that through one of my dishes. This one's the first VR course. Um, this one is called You Make Asian Food Right, and it's about, for a lot of minorities, definitely Asians, it feels like you always have to cook like ethnic food, and it, whereas you don't have the option, whereas I think many times we've seen the food world, especially like, oh, white men can cook anything, but if you're Asian, people always assume that's that's the style of food you cook, and just feeling many times pigeonholed into what you can or cannot do. Once it gets that little sprinkle, it's ready. Growing up in a pretty traditional Chinese family, I didn't really see food as a career option at all. After I started a career in management consulting, I had like an existential crisis where I just didn't like my job. I could feel that it was sucking the life out of me. I didn't want to get up in the morning. So I applied early to business school at Columbia, got in and essentially had nine months to do what I wanted to do. And immediately I just knew I wanted to go to culinary school. With that, I started a pop-up series that's kind of like, you know, put my foot in the door, see how I liked it, um, called Wednesdays with my husband who does mixology. We were trying to expand our repertoire of what we could do food and drink wise, but also bring people together in a deeper way. Everyone's here? Amazing. All right, game time, ladies. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We're really, really excited to have you all for the very first Asian America for 2019. Asian in America has been a project about specifically the Asian American identity and topics within that. Everything from you know, the white savior complex to substitutions, whether in food or in people, where people say Asians all look the same, um, to the mi model minority myth. And three of the courses are presented with virtual reality, and three of the courses are presented with poetry. One of the other dishes is called stereotypes, and I don't think I need to go into how many of us are impacted by stereotypes, but what I also wanted to explore in that is that many times it is the minority that also imposes some of those stereotypes on the rest of their community. My mom used to say, you know, you have to be a nice Chinese girl, you have to be docile and sweet, and Asian women are always fighting against that stigma that they're very meek, and at the same time, here's my mother telling me to like fall into that as well.
one of my earliest memories is going to Chinatown with my parents when we still lived here uh, in New York and being like, oh, it's so smelly and it's so gross and it's dirty and, you know, not liking it. And um, it's so ironic, you know, years later coming back and I'm like, oh, it's like so nostalgic. I miss all of this. And I'm not saying that all the fish stands always smell really great, but there's also a little bit of that like loving feeling that I get walking through Chinatown. So I hope that through my food and reading my writings that they can un better understand what I was thinking about at that time and how my food has turned out this way. I'm trying out a new dish. This is called toxic masculinity. So the idea behind this dish is presenting something that is kind of delicate, something that's trying to mature and grow into itself, that's colorful and multifaceted on top of this hourglass here. And then at the base, um, I've created this uh, steak sauce. It's like so heavy, it's so overpowering, it's very unidimensional. But to actually eat the dish, you have to turn this hourglass over. Obviously, this is a pretty direct symbolic reference to time. Um, and with time, you flip everything over, the sauce drains on the dish, it totally ruins how it looks, it kind of uh, overpowers how it tastes, and you're kind of left with this, well, did I like the first version better? Like, what was the point? One, two. I think Asian Americans and other just minorities can really help everyone and each other a lot by giving everyone the space to be an individual. I think that's the biggest fight is that everyone is trying to be their own selves and not be blanketed into a community. I hope that most people after the experience will go home and be able to take a good look at themselves. A, we're all complicit in so many problems in our society and how can we individually become better, but also maybe reevaluate aspects of their worldview that they hadn't before. Hi everyone, I'm Sari, the producer of Her Stories. Click here to watch more episodes, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment letting us know what other people and topics you want to see on the show. And make sure to subscribe to Now This Her.